As someone who edits videos primarily on the desktop, being asked to edit videos on a phone feels like a really frustrating experience. Trying to deal with a multi-track timeline with your soundtrack and B-roll and voiceovers and titles and captions and all that stuff on a tiny phone screen, it doesn't feel like it should work. And same thing with uh, you know precision edits and all the features that I would want all in one place. And up until this point, I've tried different apps and I haven't found that perfect fit. And luckily, today, Premiere is out on iPhone. Now, what this means is I've got a full multi-track video editor at my fingertips with a lot of the big features that I expect from the desktop app as well. Um, so in this video today, I'm gonna walk through how I've been using Premiere on the iPhone and show you some of the features and techniques and shortcuts that I'm loving. Uh, if you think it looks cool, you should definitely download it as well. It is out today and check it out. So. If that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so let's do a walkthrough. Uh, here I have Premiere running on an iPhone 15, and the home screen is really welcoming and inviting. I've got some tutorials up top here. I've watched these before, so I'm gonna X out of those. And then a bunch of quick actions at the top to help me get started. So for example, the one I use a lot is New Blank Project. I'll just tap on that. Um, also add captions. If I just have a video and I wanna quickly add captions, I tap on that and I'm ready to go. Um, I have all my projects saved down here. I'm gonna personally tap on this first one, 2025 Vacation. This is one that I've been working on, a vertical video. I'm gonna go ahead and tap there and that loads up the main editor interface. This is where I'm spending 95% of my time here in Premiere. And the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot going on the screen right now, right? I've got two simultaneous video streams happening here of myself at the bottom talking through and some vacation footage at the top. I've got some captions um, happening and uh, I also have a title of summer vacation up at the top. And you'll notice I have a fully fledged multi-track timeline down here at the bottom. So if I tap this um, drag, this little thing on the left-hand side, you'll see I can see as much or as little of my timeline as I want. And so at certain points, all I need to see is just a little bit of my timeline and I'm just you know going through that. And then certain times I want to move things around to different tracks, right? So for example, if I wanted to move this, I can tap and drag it, move it wherever I want in this interface. And that just makes it really easy to uh, work around with multiple tracks. Uh, so this feels more at home with what I'm used to, uh, editing on Premiere on the desktop, and now on mobile, I kind of had that same uh, flexibility. So one thing to note is that this bottom track down here, the one with the dark background and has me uh, with the red shirt on talking uh, through things, that is your main track. And that's gonna be by default a gapless track. Meaning if I take something here and then I drag and move it to a different position, there's not a missing spot where that was. It's going to, all the other clips are gonna shift over and uh, close that gap. And so this is really great for kind of my main talking track showing up down there. And then these other tracks up here, these are going to be your more freeform tracks. These can go wherever you want and you can have as many gaps or whatever as you need. So just something to keep in mind as you're editing. There's a lot of smart stuff they're doing for track management. So for example, uh, here I've got a clip uh, that I want to extend a little bit and notice my captions are in the way and as I drag those captions are actually moving out of the way and there's also some nice haptic feedback too as I'm doing this trim I'm feeling little bumps on the phone uh, as I get to certain edit points so when I hit where another clip or caption or title or same is edited I feel a little shake and that is really nice in helping me understand where those specific trim points are and it locks on and snaps on really, really nicely. And if I wanna get really precise, I can zoom in, I'm just pinching out here to zoom in, and I can start to go frame by frame by tapping these frame forward and frame back buttons if I need to. And I could of course trim to that if I wanted to. There's also the split command you can use if I wanted to take this, delete it. Um, maybe I wanna take this and now extend it out a little bit to there. Really easy to do these kind of edits. And so whether I'm doing you know more wide scale edits or really fine tuned frame by frame precise edits, I can do all of that in one place, which is fantastic. 
Taking a look around the rest of the interface up here, I have my aspect ratios. This button uh, will allow me to see all sorts of different aspect ratios uh, for whatever I'm doing, YouTube, Reels, uh, TikTok, whatever. All of them show up down here, really easy to change that. If I want a full screen preview, I tap this icon that's next to it and that's gonna play that back uh, as well. And I can, you know, of course, scrub and see everything full screen to make sure it's looking exactly like I want it to. Now, when nothing is selected in the timeline, I'm going to see three options at the bottom, video and images, music and audio, and titles and captions. And so if I tap into any of these, a little tray is gonna appear above that's gonna give me a ton of different options. So here in video and images, I could of course add stuff from my photo library. I've got Adobe Stock. We have some generative features here. Um, music and audio, I've got a ton of soundtracks at my disposal. I can immediately record a voiceover. Sound effects, generate sound effects. I'm gonna show that in a little bit. Um, extracting audio from a video so you can use it as a different track, all sorts of stuff like that. And then finally, adding titles and captions is a really easy process as well. A feature that I use a lot on Premiere Desktop is the enhance speech function. So anytime I have a voiceover, whether it's me here in my office or out and about uh, in you know a crowded concert or something like that, or I'm just recording a voiceover, I will always turn on enhance speech because it just makes me sound like I was recording in a professional studio, even if I was just using you know my onboard phone microphone. Um, so the nice thing is that that functionality is also on Premiere here. Here. So here I've got a, a clip where I was talking in a crowded pool. And you'll notice, by the way, this blur effect in the background, this automatically happens anytime you have something that's a different aspect ratio. So here I've got this uh, clip and I can, of course, pinch and grab and you know move it around to different places. And what it's going to do is instead of just showing black behind it, it's gonna automatically fill in that space with the blurring effect. And that's just really nice. Uh, it's gonna make it feel a little bit better for you know social media or wherever uh, my final destination is. But let's listen to this clip here and see how it sounds normally. Cameron, just chilling, out relaxing. Right there, Bridget is right there. So it's not that bad, but there is a lot more background noise uh, than I would like. I was in a crowded pool on a cruise ship. What are you going to do? And I wish that I could kind of drown that out a little bit and amplify my voice a little bit more. And that's the nice thing is that I can do that. So by tapping on this particular clip and then scrolling over, I've got a bunch of different options I could do, including color and remove background and all this other stuff. I'm going to go ahead and tap on enhance speech and I'm going to turn this on. Now I've done this before. If you haven't, there's a little bit of a processing time that happens behind the scenes, but once it's done, I've got full control over how much enhancement I want here. So let's go to 90% and how much of the background noise I want. Again, it's going to 10 by default. So let's take a listen and hear how this sounds with enhanced speech on. Cameron is chilling, out relaxing, relaxing all cool right there. Bridget. So that's sounding a lot better to me. It's able to make my voice a little bit clearer, take that background noise out. And if I wanted a little bit more background noise, of course, I've got the sliders that I can play around with to take control of how much of each I want. And to do that all on the phone, that's pretty impressive. Uh, that's something I do all the time on my desktop, on a desktop premiere, whether it's voiceovers, uh, me in the office here, this tutorial, whatever, I am always using enhanced speech. And it's fantastic that it's also available on the phone. Another thing that I add to a lot of my videos is sound effects. So adding some extra layering and texturing to my video, whether it's you know a whoosh sound when I do a transition or I want the waves in the ocean to feel a little bit more lively, so I add some sound effects there. Um, it's just one of those things that you can add a lot of extra dynamics to your video. And here at uh, this part, I, there's a part in the rock climbing section where uh, my son did make it to the top of this rock climbing wall he rings the bell and then he comes down. Uh, the problem is the bell was way high up and you couldn't really hear it as well all the way down where I was filming from. So what are my options? Well, I could just play it as is. Um, I could, you know, find some stock bell ringing. I could go record myself doing a bell ring or I could use the generate sound effect feature that's in here. So I'll show you what I mean. So here, uh, let's uh, scroll back a little bit and then I'm gonna tap on music and audio and this new option here, generate sound effect. What I'm gonna do is describe the sound effect that I want. So let's go ahead and say, um, ringing a bell. And 
I'm also going to do the extra option of performing the sound because there was specific timing that was happening with this particular clip when he was ringing it. Ring, 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 something like that. I could also do this for footsteps, like, you know, if I wanted to record myself saying clop, 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 or I'm knocking on a door, knock, 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 that sort of stuff that's more timing based. And it's not just something you need in the background, like, you know, like I said, the waves or something like that in the background. Doing specific timing can really help sell the effect a little bit better. So let's go ahead and perform this sound. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that and then I'm going to do a recording process. So here we go. Ring a ring, ring a ring, ring a ring, ring, ring. Okay, and there we go. There is my performance and I'm going to go ahead and tap on generate and it's going to go through the generating process. Okay, so now we're done. I've got four different options that I can listen to and I can choose the best one. So let's hear some of them. Here's one. So if I like one of those, I have the ability to select it and tap add sound effect. If I don't, I could tap back at the top and try again. In this case, I like these. Uh, let's just go with number three, tap add sound effect and look at that. Now down in the bottom, I have a track called ringing the bell and there it is. And of course I can trim it, move it, retime it however I want and it's that easy. So I absolutely love this feature. This is one of those features that I'm finding excuses to use it uh, in my uh, videos. So maybe, uh, you know, I hear a specific thing. I'm like, oh yeah, there's carnival sounds earlier here where, you know, their kids are riding a carousel and I say, you know, can I have carnival background noise or a carnival organ or something like that? And these are just little dynamic things that I wouldn't have thought of or done before that I'm now a little bit more uh, interested in trying out and seeing if I can add it into my videos. Here's another really useful feature. It's uh, called expand image. And what it allows me to do is take a photo like this uh, where maybe I want, instead of the blurred background, I wish that I would taken this photo um, and seen more of the sky and more of the deck of the cruise ship. And I can actually do that inside the app. So I'm gonna tap on expand image here and say what the aspect ratio is. Yes, nine by 16 is correct. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on generate. So there we go. It's gonna fill in the extra space. And I have a few different options here a few different skies and uh, decks. This is looking the best to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap use image. And there we go. Now it shows up. I also have some animation options here. So let's go to photo motion and let's do a uh, zoom out, something like that. And now when I play this back, the photo is gonna kind of get that dynamic quality of zooming and I'm seeing the full sky and the full deck and both my kids at the soccer table. So this is really, really helpful. Um, I found it most helpful when I'm doing a uh, 16 by nine video uh, for YouTube and I have a vertical uh, you know, photo that I took and I wanna expand it a little bit to show more on the sides. It works really well for that. Tons of color options as well. So if I tap on looks down here, I've got a lot of options that I can do, make this a little more dramatic. I can up the intensity if I want. Um, just like to play around with color and try some different things. If I wanna apply it to all the clips, I can tap this icon here in the upper left corner and that's gonna do that. So we could go ahead, uh, apply the color so everything is consistent if I wanted to. And then sometimes I really need to up the contrast or something's washed out or I want something artistic. That's when I go into uh, adjust over here and I have a ton of options here. So if I really wanna up the contrast, for example, or get into the different color, feeling, whatever, add a vignette, um, all sorts of different options there, they're also at my disposal. Another fun one to play around with is generating stickers. So if I tap on video and images and then generate sticker, here I can create basically an image with a transparent background to layer on my video somewhere. So let's just say a uh, hand illustrated sunshine, something like that. And let's go ahead and generate that. And it gives me a few different options here. I'm gonna pick this solo sun uh, showing up down here, use sticker. And now I can kind of resize this. Let's put it in the corner maybe back here, something like this. Let's rotate it around like that uh, on the side there. And then let's put it under my title. So something like that. 
and now summer vacation shows up and the sun is there. So just a really quick example, but uh, you can get an idea of, you know, I want an arrow point to something, a circle going around something. Uh, I use it a lot for that sort of stuff, like these little accents that help, um, you know, bring a little bit of extra quality to certain scenes. Tons of title and caption options as well. If I tap on titles and captions and then title, let's go ahead and write vacation. And I have ability to edit the style here. So lots of different presets I could use. Let's go with this one. This feels nice and bold. Lots of different font options uh, at my disposal. Colors, I can choose from the text and the background. So if I did like a blue background and maybe let's make the text be white instead, really easy to do that. Uh, let's you know position it up here. Um, different layout options, text width to show how much, um, if I had multiple lines and stuff like that, is it breaking on the line or not? Uh, so lots of options like that. And then we've also got captions. So let's tap on this and captions. I'm gonna replace my existing captions, go ahead and create. It's gonna go through that process. So the captions are getting a little lost down there. I'm going to drag them up here and that change is gonna affect all of my captions, which is nice, they're all kind of consistent. And then I can tap on style here and I have a bunch of different options. I like this one that uh, actually highlights the word that's being spoken at any given time. I have some options over the font and color and layout, just like we said before. And uh, this is great. And now I've got captions, easy as that. And if I need to edit anything, I can of course go in and fix it as well. So when I'm happy with my final edit, I can tap on the share button up here in the upper right corner, and it's going to give me all the options. You know, if I want full 4K, uh, 60 frames per second, I have the ability to do that. HDR on and off down here, it's gonna give me an estimated file size down there at the bottom so I can play around with quality. If like I'm, you know, trying to text this to someone, um, I might wanna make that a little bit lower. And then another cool thing is this tab up here. Premiere Desktop Beta. So if I tap on here, it's actually gonna send my timeline and all my files to Premiere Pro on the desktop. Now this is the beta version of it. In the future, this will be the full uh, shipping desktop version, but for now it's in the beta version. And this is going to send my project and all those files so I can do further work on it on the desktop. This is great because I'm not just confined to my phone. If I wanted to add some additional things in Premiere, or a lot of times I'm dynamic linking and adding some stuff in After Effects, all of that I can still do with this project that originated on my phone, which is great because usually I'll get started with an edit here, um, play around with it, get some basic stuff down, and then add those finishing touches in Premiere or After Effects or whatever else I want to do. All right, so that's it. I hope that was a helpful first look at Premiere on the iPhone. Uh, it's in the App Store right now, so you can go ahead and download it and check it out and start creating your own videos and telling your own stories. Um, there are a lot of cool features coming soon that I can't wait for you all to see, so check it out now, get used to it, try it out, give us your feedback. Uh, we'll keep iterating and we'll keep adding cool stuff. So uh, from all of us at Adobe, thank you for checking things out and we'll see you soon.